Hi, this is Catherine, and welcome back to Taking Tea with Catherine. This is autumn harvest tea because autumnal, like the weather today, it felt like autumn rather than winter, and I'm not complaining. And it is cinnamony and just the perfect thing for my mood today. And it's a small cup because I don't have a lot of time to be drinking a lot of tea because I have got to get through a lot of books today because today is part two of the book haul of shame. <laughs> so ashamed. But anyway, I'm not a hundred, oh, that was loud. I'm not a hundred percent ashamed because I plan to go down to the Strand Bookshop tomorrow um, to meet a friend. It's a long story that I'm not gonna talk about now. But I'm hoping that I can bring with me a bunch of my books. That's Janie, by the way. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm hoping to bring a bunch of um, books to the Strand to sell back. You know, I don't get a lot of money for it, but at least I get rid of a lot of books. So, and if I don't make it to the actual Strand, I, I can at least bring the books into the city and bring them back to book off or something. So we're making moves, you know? Yes, you're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are the pretty one on this channel right now. But anyway, um, so yeah, I had, there were like a couple of sales on Book Outlet, so that's my excuse, and there were books that I was just really interested in, and I am proud of one thing, and besides the fact that I didn't spend a lot of money on these books, but I'm also proud of the fact that most of these books are non-fiction. I do have a lot of fiction in my library. Um, a lot of them are classics. I am not whatsoever seemed to that. And then there's some books that are contemporary, more recent fiction that I like and I just want to return to them a couple of times over and over again. Or books that I just want to refer to. But for the most part, books that are fiction I don't plan to hold on to forever because I just, once I read the story and it was a good story, I, there's not much more, you know, I'm talking about mostly contemporary that I really want to look at anymore. However, with nonfiction, I always feel like I could always return to it at some point just to just to even read a paragraph or two when it's a fact or something I want to read about. So I don't feel so bad. She is a ham. Anyway, <laughs> I like Freddy comes on, but he just sort of wanders around, you know? I don't know if he'll come on this time. She might have been the usurper today. Anyway, moving on. Um... So I'm going to show you the books. I'm going to start off with the one fiction book that I got. And I showed you recently that book. I think it's called Time and Again. That had, that, that had the picture of the Dakota in it. And, um, you know, I, I, I find myself every once in a while returning to wanting to read about John Lennon. Because I've always been a big Beatles fan. And he's kind of my favorite. I'm not crazy about everything about him. But, you know, my favorite ever is Queen. You guys know that. But the Beatles are quite close to my favorite as well. And um, this year he would have been 80, which is crazy. But mm, he also, it's also going to be 40 years since he was killed in front of Dakota on his way home from, I guess, go, being in the studio with Yoko. And his wife had to watch him get killed right in front of her, which is terrible. And I know the spot where it was. And it's, it's kind of a sad feeling to go by there even though I'm, you know I'm sure plenty of people live there and whatever but I still find the building fascinating and so when I saw this I said okay the Dakota Winters by Tom Barbash it's fiction it's about a guy who comes back from I think he was being in the Peace Corps or something and he comes back to the Dakota in the winter of 1980 so we are on track with reading about that time period I can't believe it's gonna be 40 years I could actually remember the news when John Lennon died. It was a big, intense thing. It was, you know, every generation has their big news, big assassinations, especially every, anyone who grew up in the 60s. Oh my goodness. But that was, that was a big one. You know, I don't remember really watching the news until then. And I was really young. So that's my fiction. And now I'm gonna get into some of the, I guess you call it, the nature bits, you know? These are the animal books. Um, this is called Wild Animals I Have Known by Ernest Thomas Thompson Seaton. And it's, I think, I think mostly based... What are you doing, kitten? Oh, she's playing with stuff. She's found the fairy lights. Yay. 
we get to have a distraction today. Anyway, I think he, I think this takes place in Canada, and it's about animals there. And that's cool, because this guy is around the same age as my grandfather was, and he spent a lot of his time in Canada growing up. So, I don't know how related that's going to be, because whatever, but, you know, I like making connections. And I just like reading about animals. And this is Sheepish, Two Women, Fifty Sheep, and Enough Will Save the Planet by Catherine Friend. Um, I like reading about sheep. I read a book called The Lambs that I wasn't so crazy about. It was just too sad. Hopefully this won't be as sad. Uh, it looks like it's going to be cute, but I don't know. The name is kind of amusing, Catherine Friend, because even though my grandmother's name was Italian, it basically meant that. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. I don't know. It just is. To me. To me. Speaking of friend, this is A Friend for Life. True stories of love and rescue from Battersea Dogs and Cats Home with a forward by Paul O'Grady, MBE. Don't really like the picture of the, these animals in the front, which is kind of sad because they remind me of a poster I had as a kid of these cat, this cat, this kitten and puppy that was supposed to be cute, but they, it looked, I don't know, it creeped me out. So I guess that's what it reminds me of. But I'm happy because for years I had, well, I had a number of cats that we got from other people. Basically someone was giving away animals or whatever, but then I bought a cat Zenobia. I love her so much, but I always kind of had that feeling like I had to apologize because I bought her from a shop and I don't really, I don't really, um, encourage that. So when I got, you know, I still love her so much, but when I got Freddie, um, I got him from the ASPCA. So he was a rescue. Someone had not rescue, like not rescue from the streets, but like someone had dropped him off, owner surrender, and so I feel like I rescued him from the shelter, as it were. So I felt good about myself, even though he gave Zenobia such a hard time. Jamie I just rescued from the hall, but hey, you know what? Um, so I do like finding, st reading stories about adoptions, whatever, pretty good, even though some of them are sad. But, so this looks like what it's going to be. I like the idea that it's Battersea because I haven't been there in years, but I have a friend who lives there who I hope to see in London. And um, yeah, the park was really nice there. <laughs> so, and this was, oh my goodness. I Have you guys ever seen Humans of New York? I think they also have a Humans of London, but I think it started with Humans of New York where people go around and take a picture of someone in New York and interview them. And they, you know, whole quote their story. Some of the stories are messed up and some of them are really interesting and inspiring. Um, I ran into someone in, in um, Central Park with a parrot on her on her shoulder and I, I said, okay, take a picture. She's like, sure, the Humans of New York guy did, so you can too. And I was like, all right. But someone decided to do uh, felines of New York, <laughs> which I think is so cute because you guys know I'm a cat person. I like dogs too, but I I am definitely, I think it's very obvious that I'm a cat person. The word cat is in my name. And I was going through this and now I can't find it because of course when I'm going through it in front of you guys, you know, oh, here it is. I was going through this book and I was like, well, I'm not going to know any of these cats because most of them are indoors. And what are the odds of me knowing these cats, even the ones that are in Astoria, Queens? But then I found that they had Tiny the Usurper from Com Com Community Bookstore. And in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and it says, you know, I do my best to make recommendations, but often my suggestions are perceived as aggression. I have good intentions. I just don't want you people reading garbage. That's all. And I know Tiny. I've met him a couple times when I've been to this bookshop. I don't go to Park Slope very often, but if you guys are in the neighborhood, do stop by, especially if you like cats. And um, I just think it's great because I met Tiny and he's a nice cat. He's really nice. He's very friendly and he lets you pet him. So, you know, you know. So, all right, let's get into some greenery. This is The Wood for the Trees, One Man's Long View of Nature by Richard Forty. And this is, uh, I think, Oxfordshire, England. And he talks about plants and um, trees and stuff like that. And hello. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Sorry, a little Ajita there. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> That's how I feel when I see things. I get all uh, excited. I get choked up in a non-crying way. Um, 
And this, as someone who is a city dweller and who doesn't really see as many beautiful trees as she would like, unless she can get to Central Park when it's not dark. You know, because I do value my life most of the time. I like this book, Urban Forests, A Natural History of Trees and People and People in the American Cityscape by Jill Jones, I guess. And I like, I like the look of this. So I'm sure it's not just about New York. Um, where is she from? She's the founder of the Baltimore Tree Trust. Okay, so probably somewhere around there. I, uh, I don't know. I just think that's up my alley. So there you go. All right. Um, this is, we're going into, okay, before we get into history. You guys know how much I love the Pre-Raphaelites, right? You guys remember that? You know, I'm going to test you on this. Um, and I do have some books that are Pre-Raphaelite books, but I read a lot of these things years ago and I'm just catching up again because you know how you have a rebirth in your interests and I've always loved the pre-Raphaelites don't get me wrong I think you guys can tell I mean I, I, I went years well before I was on book two but I went years with red hair because I thought it looked more pre-Raphaelite than my natural color although I don't know whatever I mean that, that wasn't the only reason but it was a big plus for me and so I'm obviously a fan so when I can find a good Reasonably, reasonably priced, reasonably. I've got to learn how to speak English again. Anyway, so this is the uh, illustrated letters and diaries of the Pre-Raphaelites, selected and introduced by Jan Marsh. So this should be great reading and not just reading, but look, you got the ball lambs in here. We get to look at pictures. I love pictures. When I'm reading about Pre-Raphaelites, I like there to be pictures you know, of the paintings and the peoples. And who is this guy? Oh, I know this guy. Uh-oh, there's no... I see a, a lack of a space in a word, and I'm not happy about that. But okay, I am going to like this. Look at how beautiful... Okay, you don't want to look at my mug right now, do you? You want to see some beautiful pictures, right? I mean, really. The colors. Some people thought it was a bit garish or whatever, but I'm like... They hadn't been through the hippies and the LSD 60s time period, so they don't know. They don't know what colorful and lurid it is, do they? Not to mention the 80s. Oh. Anyway, so this book, I saw Peg from the History Shelf had mentioned that it had been reasonably priced on book outlets, so there I went. And it is a book that I had on my mind anyway, but Peg is, I mean, I think she reads a little more about battles than I do, like war and stuff like that. But otherwise, her interests um, in history and stuff are very much what I find interesting as well, often. And I, I like, I love her channel. And I also um, like that she's into magazines too, because not everyone is anymore. So, bonus. But so she mentioned this book and I said, oh, I have had my eye on this book for some time. And so now I can find it at a good price. And that's The New Silk Roads, The Present and Future of the World by Peter Frankopan. Isn't this beautiful? OMG, it is gorgeous. And I hope this is a good book. It's got a lot of good, happy blurbs in the back, so let's hope so. Uh, okay, so which, which one do I do first? Okay, let's just talk about Peter Aykroyd. I have read a number of books of his that I like, so I figure if he's gonna write about histories of England, I'll probably like that I've read a couple of books that were his history books about his. I'm wondering if I actually read any of these books in the past and just don't remember because, you know, I've been hit in the head a number of times in my life, so. And I can't find my my book journal from, like, 20 years ago. I, I looked. I knocked over a bunch of my old journals, and they're all over the place right now, and I can't seem to find it. Oh, well. I have three books of his about the history of England. I don't like the fact that they don't quite match. Two of them are... Two of them are uh, hardcover and one of them is paperback, but I'm, and, and we're missing a little time period in here. But I'm not going to lose my mind over it because, let's face it, there are plenty of other things in life to lose one's mind over. Um, yeah. this It's kind of funny because this one starts at like the beginning of time and then it goes to the Tudors. And the other books cover much shorter time periods. But this is the Foundation. It's called Foundation, not Isaac Asimov. But I have to read that book as well. The History of England from its earliest beginnings to the Tudors. And then we have Revolution. The History of England from the Battle of the Boyne to the Battle of Waterloo. 
and I'm not remembering the Battle of the Boyne when that was, so that's good that I can remember remind myself because I know I've read about it, I just don't remember where when it is. Must rectify. I know Waterloo. Waterloo, don't make me sing Waterloo. Okay, and then we have Dominion, the history of England from the Battle of Waterloo to Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. You know, I like some Victoria in my life. I don't like that when we buy these books, sometimes they put these dots. I know why they do it, because they want to show that it's not, like, bought full price or something. It's a, it's a whole book trade thing. But I just, eh. Sometimes they're made a little bit neat, but eh. Either way, eh. Eh. Just, it's just not my favorite thing. I can live with it, though, for, for the discounts. You know? For the discounts! All right, um... This one, Red Dot Special. That was a thing in a store, by the way. That's not, you know. Anyway, um, so another thing, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. These are three books that I'm going to, that are kind of related. I have been, especially since watching The Crown, I've been wanting to read about Churchill. But my interest went back a little further. I'm not that much into reading about World War II. I don't, I'm, I will read about things that are World War II related, but I just... It's not my biggest interest. And, um, but I've always thought the idea of Winston Churchill is interesting. And I've seen him portrayed in certain things that I was curious about. Like Doctor, anytime someone is portrayed in Doctor Who, I immediately want to find out more about them. Almost always. If I haven't found out about them already. Yes. <laughs> That's just me and Doctor Who, you know? But years ago, I... At work, I ran into a guy who had a big volume, and I think it was The Last Lion, of Churchill. And I just thought, oh, I should read that. And I asked him if it was good, and he said, yeah, so far it's really good. And I looked at a couple of the books about Churchill in a bookshop near my job. I'm not kidding. This is a real bookshop called Chartwell. And it is, it has other books. It does. But it's in a, I don't know, atrium area. And it's just mainly all in the front. And a big theme of the bookshop is books about Churchill, or by Churchill. I mean, a Churchill-themed bookshop in New York. I know he was part American, but still, kind of interesting, right? So I've always been kind of like, I really need to bone up on Churchill. Is that the right expression? So I couldn't decide which one to get, and they were both pretty cheap. One of them is a library book, which is annoying, because it's... You know how I feel about that. It's got the stamp. From Virginia. But anyway... Uh, the Last Lion. So I got The Last Lion by William Manchester and Paul Reed. It goes from, I guess, 1940 to 1965, which is a big, important time. You know? And then we have a Roy Jenkins biography. And this is also humongous. And I think reading those two books, I will know as much about Churchill as I'll ever need to know. However, I also got Churchill and Orwell, The Fight for Freedom, by Thomas E. Ricks. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I'm not that into prizes, to be perfectly honest, but you still have that moment where you're like, oh, winner of the Pulitzer Anyway, I kind of just like George Orwell as well, so I just thought that was an interesting duology. So, yeah, and it's got a penguin orange, you know? So I like that. Okay, that is it for now. And I think that's enough, right? I mean, I think I have enough books in this one haul to last me for quite some time. Because, yes, I do. <laughs> but we'll see which ones I read first. Because you guys know I have other books that I have to read as well. Yes, I do. If you guys have read any of these books, and you know me, and you know what I like, and you say, Catherine, this one is the priority. On it now. I may not read it tomorrow, but I will read it soon. And um, if there's any that you looked at and said, no, Catherine, that's a disaster. Save yourself. Get rid of it. You know, throw it in the garbage. Toss it off a high building in the middle of the night so you don't hit anybody. But toss it. I don't know. Burn it. No, I don't burn books. <laughs> um, if, yeah, if there's anything I should absolutely avoid, let me know. But let me know why without giving away spoilers. Because I may not agree with you and then I'll read it anyway. Um, yeah, that's it. If you like talking about these kind of books, please subscribe down below all the things. This is Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine. Slightly ashamed, slightly happy. Hope you have a lovely tea, book, 
kitty cat everything fill day.